and gentlemen, here we go. This is my reserve box for War of the Spark. And there he is, Tezzeret, Master of the Bridge. This thing is just stupid levels of good. And now we're going to do an unboxing video for the Path to Exile podcast. So let's see what we get. It's going to be, yes. Hold that for me. Look at that. That is beautiful. All 36 packs. Alright. Let's see here. I'm going to use my nifty little stand. I normally use for my phone to record, but we're going to do this. Crush Descent, common for three, blue, counter target spell in this controller pays two, and mass two. That's not bad for a common. Not bad at all. Alright. Chain Whip Cyclops. Cyclops Warrior is a 4-4 four, four for four and a red. Three and a red. Target creature cannot block this turn. It's not bad. <clears throat> Artwork is actually very interesting. I like it. It looks like it's in a rebel belt for the Gruul clan. Some of the uh, Nicol Bolas zombies. Teo's Light Shield. When it enters the battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control for two and a white. It's a zero three illusion. Mm, not too bad. Toll the Invasion. It's a sorcery. If your target opponent reveals their hand, you choose a non led card from it. That player discards that card, a mass one, for two and a black. That that might be going into deck I'm building, so we'll see with that one. Crawl Stinger. Crawl, is that how you say that? Crawl. Death Touch, Insect Assassin, it's a 2-2, two, two, for two and a forest. Huh. Sarcans Catharsis. <clears throat> Does five damage to target player or planeswalker. That's very handy for four and a mountain. Vraska's finisher. It's a Gorgon assassin. <clears throat> when Vraska's finisher enters the battlefield, destroy target creature or planeswalker and opponent controls that was dealt damage this turn. Three, two, two, and a black. Sahili's Silverwing. It's a Drake artifact creature. Four to two, three. Flying when it enters the battlefield. Look at the top card of opponent's library. That's not too bad. The artwork is actually pretty detailed. Alright, Bloom Hulk. Plant elemental when it enters the battlefield. Proliferate. Oh, I didn't know they brought that ability back. So choose any number of permanents and or players, then give each another another counter of each kind already there. It's a pretty powerful ability. I forgot about that one. Charm Stray. It's a 1-1 one, one for one plane. Lifelink. When it enters the battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter on each other creature you control named Charmed Stray. So you figure four in a library, you get some 5-5 five, five lifelinkers if you can pull them off pretty good. Not bad. Alright, now we're at the uncommons. Storm the Citadel. For four in a forest, until end of turn, creatures you control get plus two plus two in game. Whenever this creature does combat damage to a player or planeswalker, destroy target artifact or enchantment defending player controls. Whoa. That is pretty powerful. Even with the cost, that's that's pretty insane. I like that. <clears throat> Sunblade Angel. It's a three three four. Flying, First Strike, Vigilance, and Lifelink for six. It's hefty, but that's actually not too... That's not too bad for its abilities. Grateful Apparition. It's a spirit. Whenever Grateful Apparition deals combat damage to a player or a planeswalker, proliferate. Awesome. 1-1 one, one for one in the planes. 
Ooh, Raw Storm Conduit. Nice. First pack, I get a pretty awesome Planeswalker. Whenever you cast a copy or an instant, whenever you cast a or copy an instant or sorcery spell, Raw Storm Conduit deals one damage target opponent or Planeswalker. Plus two ability to scry one, minus two whenever you cast your next entrance, instant or sorcery spell this turn, copy that spell. You may choose, choose new targets for that copy. Oh, I'm happy with that. That is, it's going to appear. And the forest. And a zombie army token. Okay, those look pretty cool, actually. All right, on to pack number two. I'm going to do this one-handed, so we'll see how this goes out. Alright. Pack number two. Bulwark Giants. When it enters the battlefield, you gain five life. It's a 3-6 six for six mana, five in a planes. Another Crest Descent. Invading Manticore. It's a zombie Manticore for five and a four, uh, five and a mountain. When invading Manticore enters the battlefield, a mass two. So put two plus one plus one counters on an army you control. If you don't control one, create a zero zero black zombie creature token first. That could be a little good. It's a four five. Crunch Wrestler. It's going to be a human warrior with trample for one in a forest, two one. When a creature with a power of four or greater enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on Crunch Wrangler. Looks like it's going to be a gruel clan aligned most likely, so that can get pretty big fast with all the big creatures they have in there. You know, Kaya's Ghost Form. It's an aura for a black. Enchant creature planes walk you control, then enchant permanent when enchanted permanent dies or is put into exile, return that card to the battlefield under your control. Whoa. That is really powerful for a common. <clears throat> Jaya's greeting. One on the mountain. Jaya's greeting deals three damage to target creature. Scry one. Very nice. Very nice. Totally lost. Put target non land permanent on top of its owner's library. Four and an island. Centaur nurturer. Three and a forest. It's a centaur druid. When centaur nurturer enters the battlefield, you gain three life. Tap it to add any one mana of any color to your mana pool. For it's a two four. That's actually pretty good. Iron Bully, it's a Golem. <clears throat> Menace, can't, this creature can't be blocked except by two or more creatures. When Iron Bully enters the battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature. It's a one one, three colorless. Erratic Visionary, we have a Human Wizard, so for two costs, one on an island. One on an island tap, draw a card, then discard a card. It's a one three. Augur of Bolas. This is a, a reprint, I think. I think the first one came out in M18 or M17. I'll have to double check that one. When Augur of Bolas enters the battlefield, look at the top three cards of your library. You may reveal an instant or sorcery card. I apologize. I got a phone call. So this is still pack number two. When Augur Bull centers the battlefield, look at the top three cards of your library. You may reveal an instant or sorcery card from among them and put them into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. It's a 1 3 Merfolk Wizard for one in an island. Price of Betrayal. Remove up to five counters from target artifact, creature, planeswalker, or opponent for one black. Holy crap, that thing is just stupid levels of good. I really, really hope I get some more of that. Oh, Vraska Swarms 
Eminence. Nice. Very nice. For two and a, either a black, either a forest or a swamp. So it's whenever a creature you control with death touch deals damage to a player or planeswalker, put a plus one plus one counter on that creature. It's minus two ability. Create a one one assassin creature token with death touch and whenever this creature deals combat damage to a planeswalker, destroy that. Whoa. Destroy that planeswalker. That is going to be just... Uh, just powerful as heck in this set. And, oh hell yeah. First Mythic Rare, Ilharg the Razebor. I wanted this when I first saw it. I am so happy I got this in my second pack. <clears throat> For three and two mountains, a legendary boar god. Trample, whenever Ilharg the Razebor attacks, you may put a creature card from your hand onto the battlefield tapped and attacking. Return that creature to your hand at the beginning of the next end step. When Ilarg the Razbor dies or is put into an exile from the battlefield, you may put it into its owner's library, third from the top. Okay, it's following the the uh, trend with the other god creatures in this uh, set. <clears throat> that first ability, that reminds me of Sneak Attack from Urza Saga way back in the day, except I don't have to pay one to put it into the battlefield. That is very awesome. Planes and the token, a devil token. Not bad, not bad. I'll take them, I'll grab the second pack. Sorry, ladies and gents. I'm getting this all figured out. Goblin Assailant. It's a one and a mountain for a two-two. Pretty standard goblin creature. That works pretty bit. Nice. Pretty janky looking armor there and a crude club. Luxodon Sergeant. I haven't seen a good any Luxodons in a while. This first box I've opened in a hot minute, so bear with me. So three and a plains, elephant soldier with vigilance. When Luxodon Sergeant enters the battlefield, other creatures you control gain vigilance until end of turn. Say three three. And just beautiful artwork on this. Some of these cards. Casmina's Transmutation. It's an aura for one in an island. <clears throat> Enchant creature. Enchant creature loses all abilities and has base power and toughness of one one. That will put a damper on a lot of things if you can't get rid of it. Oops. Two by accident. Snare spinner, one in a forest. It's a spider. Has reach. For those of you that don't know, reach allows it to block creatures with flying as though it had flying. When snare spinner blocks a creature with flying, it gets plus two, plus zero until end of turn. That makes it a, a three, three. It's not too bad for most flyers. Early game flyers. Tithe Bear Giant for six, five, and Swamp. Giant Warrior, whenever Tithe Bear Giant enters the battlefield, you may draw a card. Or you draw a card and you lose one life. It's a four, five. It's interesting. Obnixilis' Cruelty. I think I said that right. Two in a Swamp. Target creature gets minus five, minus five until end of turn. If that creature would die this turn, exile it instead. Not bad, not bad. Another totally lost. Rune Law Enforcer. One planes, one tap. Target creature with converted mana cost two or greater. A one, two human soldier. Not too bad. Burning Prophet for one in a mountain. It's a human wizard. You may cast a non-creature spell. Burning Prophet gets plus one, plus zero till end of turn, then scry one, say one, three. Relentless Advance. A mass three. Whoa. <clears throat> so, three in an island. It's a sorcery. A mass three. Put three plus one plus one counters on an army you control. If you don't control one, create a zero, zero black zombie, ar zombie army token first. I apologize. I cannot talk today. That's a little good for a common. And then we're to the uncommons for this pack. Pack number three. 
for one, a swamp and a forest. Ley line of a ley line prowler, a nightmare beast. I haven't seen nightmare beast since uh, Torment, I want to say. Maybe a little bit sooner, but that's the last one I remember seeing. Nightmare beast, death touch, life link. Tap add one man of any color to your mana pool. It's a two three. That's that's a little good. All those abilities rolled into one. Plus it's a get to add mana. Heck yeah. Mo Wu, Loyal Companion. It's a legendary creature hound for three in a forest. Trample Vigilance. If one or more plus one plus one counters will be put onto Mo Wu, Loyal Companion, that many plus one plus one counters are plus one counters are put on it instead. Okay, so if you want to put two plus one plus one counters on it, you get three. Okay, that's not bad. Interesting to combine with the proliferate ability and... Hang on here. Davriel, Rogue Shadow Mage. Alright. Two in a swamp. It's going to be a legendary planeswalker. His static ability. At the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, if that player has one or fewer cards in hand, Davriel, Rogue Shadow Mage, deals two damage to them. It's a minus one ability. Target player discards a card. Starts with three loyalty counters. It's not too bad. Then, Krinko. Ten Street Kingpin. I've heard good things about him. <clears throat> Two and a mountain. It's a legendary goblin. Whenever Krenko Ten Street Kingpin attacks, put a plus one plus one counter on it. Then create a number of one one goblin creature tokens equal to Krenko's power. Okay. For that low cost, you get him out early game, he is just going to dominate the token game. And if you toss him into a modern deck with parallel lives or... Uh, what was that other one? Just it would just be just dumb, just so fast. We got a mountain and a wall token. All right, that's it for pack number three. On to pack number four. Actually, let's do it this way. All right, we have Stealth Mission. Two in an island. It's a sorcery. Put two plus one plus one counters on target creature you control. That creature cannot be blocked this turn. Okay, not too bad, not too bad. <laughs> Goblin Assault Team. Oh, man. For three in a mountain. Creature is a Goblin Warrior with haste. When it dies, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control. It's a four one. That's a good way to pump up other creatures early game. A Pouncing Lynx, it's a 2 1. A 1 in a Plains. As long as, you're, as long as it's your turn, it has First Strike. Well, it's not too bad. Sky Theater Strix, it's a 1 2 for 1 Island. Flying whenever you cast a non creature spell. Sky Theater Strix gets plus 1 plus 0 until end of turn. Spark Reaper. Here's a zombie. We got going two and a swamp. It's a two three. Pay three to sacrifice a creature, a planeswalker. Uh, you gain one life and draw a card. Interesting, interesting. Courage in Crisis. Two in a forest is a sorcery. Put a plus one plus one counter on target creature, then proliferate. It's not bad. So you get two for the price of one. I like it. Nahiri's Stone Blades. One in a mountain. Up to two target creatures each get plus two plus zero until end of turn. A band together. Two and a forest. At instant speed. Up to two target creatures you control. Each deal damage equal to their power to another target creature. Okay, basically making them fight each other. You get some big creatures out. That could be a way to help clear the board. Prismite. 2-1-2 so two, two for 2 colorless. Golem. Tap 2, add a man of any color to your mana pool. Herald of the Dead Horde. 3-2. So 3 in three a swamp. It's a zombie warrior creature. When Herald of the Death Horde dies, amass 2. 
Man, the amassability is just sounding just really, really good. I might have to actually build a deck around this. I think I will. Evolution Sage. It's a 3-2 Elf Druid for 2 and a Forest. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, proliferate. What? Okay, that's a little good. That is a little good. Gideon's Triumph. Instant for 1 and a uh, Plane. <laughs> Target opponent sacrifices a creature that attacked or blocked this turn. If you control a Gideon Planeswalker, that player sacrifices two of those creatures instead. Whoa. That's just a little good. Nice. My Planeswalker is going to be Sahili Sublime Artificer. One and either a mountain or an island for the other two costs. Static ability is going to be whenever you cast a non-creature spell... Create a 1 1 colorless servo artifact token. It's minus 2. Target artifact you control becomes a copy of another target artifact or creature you control until end of turn, except that it's an artifact in addition to its other types. Oh, there's some interesting things that we can have happen with that. Nizium Tank. It's a vehicle for 1 and 2 mountains, a 3 2. Trample, whenever you cast a non-creature spell, Nizium Tank becomes an artifact creature and gets plus one plus one until end of turn. Crew one. Tap any number of creatures you control with total power of one or more. This vehicle becomes an artifact creature until end of turn. Okay, interesting. I haven't got to play with many vehicle cards, so it's uh, going to be interesting. We've got our mountain, and oh, there's our servo token. Here we are, the next pack. All right, another invading manticore, another bulk war giant. Kiora's Dam Breaker. It's a Leviathan, 5-6 for 5 and an island. When Kiora's Dam Breaker enters the battlefield, proliferates. Raging Crunch. Crunch? Yeah, so that's what that looks like. Looks like a cross between a bull and a really, really pissed off Warthog. So it's a 4-3 for 2 and a mountain. It cannot attack alone. So what that means is you have to have at least one other creature attacking with it. Courage and Crisis. Alright. Soren's Thirst. For two blacks. Soren's Thirst deals two damage to our creature and you gain two life. That's not bad at all. Our Boreal Gazer. Our Boreal Grazer. I apologize. For a forest, it has reach. When Arboreal Grazer enters the battlefield, you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield tapped. It's a 0 3. That's not bad, man. So if you get that first turn, that is two men on your first turn. That's not a bad way to start the game off. Divine Arrow. Divine Arrow deals four damage to target attacking or blocking creature. It's an instant for one and a planes. <clears throat> Wall of Runes, 0 4 for a single island. Whenever a Wall of Runes enters the battlefield, scry one with Defender. Defender, for those of you that don't know, is it cannot attack, it can only block. Most walls have this ability. Arlen's Wolf. For two and a forest, it's a creature, wolf creature, 3 2. It cannot be blocked by creatures with power 2 or less. It's not bad at all. Now here we are, back to our uncommons. Another Sunblade Angel, very nice. Ooh, Tyrant Scorn. Here we go. See a picture of Nicol Bolas there in the background. The tidal storm of energy behind him, it looks like. Or 
So for a swamp and a forest, or, yeah, sorry, for a swamp and an island, choose one, destroy a target creature with converted mana cost three or less, or return a target creature to its owner's hand. That's pretty powerful. Oh, here's my planeswalker for this one, the Wanderer. I don't know who this could actually be, so I'll be curious to, when we actually find out the identities of some of these planeswalkers we haven't seen before. For three and a planes, static ability is going to be prevent all non-combat damage that will be dealt to you and other permanents you control. For his minus two ability, exile target creature with power four or greater comes in to play with five loyalty counters on it. Very nice. So, playing someone against a burn deck, this would come in great handy since they do a lot of non combat damage. Oh, there it is. Single combat. I actually just watched a video on this the other night. It's pretty awesome. Artwork for three and two planes. Sorcery each player chooses a creature or planeswalker they control, then sacrifices the rest. Players can't cast creatures or planeswalker spells until the end of your next turn. Ooh, that is powerful. Alright. Planes and another zombie army token. Pack number six, I want to say. Another Luxodon Sergeant. Another Cures Dam Breaker. Chain Whip Cyclops. Teo's Light Shield. There we go, something we haven't seen yet. A Forced Landing for one and a, a Forest. Put Dark Creature with Flying on the bottom of its owner's library. <clears throat> That'd be a great way to get rid of a lot of the big flyers like dragons and whatnot. Shriek Diver. It's a 2 1 for 2 and a Swamp. Zombie Bird Warrior. Flying for 1. Colorless. Shriek, Shriek Diver. Gains haste until end of turn. It's not too bad. Topple the Statue. 2 and a Plains. Target, tap target permanent. It's an artifact. Destroy it. Draw a card. Alright, White getting down on some artifact tape. Very interesting. Giant Growth, always a lovely reprint to see. For a single forest target creature, target creature gets plus three, plus three until end of turn. Spell Gorger Weird. I haven't seen Weird since I want to say the last Ravnica block, but I could be wrong. Say two two for two and a mountain. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, put a plus one plus one counter. On Spell Gorger Weird. Tamio's Epiphany for three in an island. Sorcery card. Scry four, then draw two cards. Alright, alright. Alright, here we are to the uncommons. Bleeding Edge. Sorcery for one and two swamps. Up to one target creature gets minus two, minus two until end of turn. A mass two. Black seems to be loving this amass ability. It's going to be awesome to see this get in standard play. Let's see what we can come up with. A Merfolk Skydiver. A 1 1 for a forest and island. Flying. Whenever Merfolk. Mer Folk Skydiver enters the battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control. And for three, a forest and an island, proliferate. Man. That can get out of hand real fast. Bond of Flourishing. For one and a forest, look at the top three cards of your library. You may reveal a permanent card from among them. Put them into your hand, put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. You gain three life. Not too bad, not too bad. Oh, there he is. Heck yeah. Karn. My oh man, I haven't gotten a Karn since the original one way back in the day. For four, 
Activated abilities of artifacts your opponent's control can't be activated. Heck yeah. It's a plus one ability. Till your next turn, up to one target non-creature artifact becomes an artifact creature with power and toughness equal to its converted mana cost. That's that's pretty badass, actually. You may choose an artifact card from you own from outside the game or in exile. Reveal that card and put it into your hand. That is stupid levels of powerful. Now, from outside the game, it generally is considered from your... Uh, sideboard. You can't go searching your binders or nothing for anything crazy like that. You can thank the uh, wish cards back in the day for those. Whew, man, I am so, so happy with this box so far. And a swamp and another zombie artifact token. Alright, here we go. Sky Theater Strix. We got one of him. Blind Blast. Instant two and a mountain. Blind Blast deals one damage to our creature. That creature cannot block this turn. Draw a card. Alright, alright. Ward Scale Crocodile. 5 3 with Hexproof. Hexproof cannot be targets of spells or abilities your opponents control. For four and a, uh, a forest. Another Spark Reaper, very nice. Enforcer Griffin, the three four for four and a plains. It has flying. Lazotep Reaver. Okay, that thing just looks awesome. I like the artwork on this one. Very detailed with the armor plating. It's a one two. For one and a swamp, it's a zombie beast. When Lazotep Reaver enters the battlefield, a mass one. I'm not gonna lie, y'all. I'm probably gonna build a zombie deck just for shits and giggles with the amass ability alone. Demolish, very nice, old school. Three and a mountain, destroy target artifact or land. Another law, rune, enforcer, very nice. A Defiant Strike for a Plains. Instant. Target creature gets plus one plus zero until end of turn. Draw a card. Mana Geode. That looks interesting. It's an Artifact for three. When it enters the battlefield, scry one. And then it has a tap ability of add one mana of any color. Very nice. Very nice. That's going to be a staple in most decks, I would assume. D-Spark. Another Nicobolus themed art here. For a plains and a swamp. Exile target permanent with converted mana cost 4 or greater. Very nice, very nice. Interplanter Beacon is going to be a non basic land. Whenever you cast a planeswalker spell, gain 1 life. Very nice. Tap to add a colorless. Pay one and tap, add two mana of different colors, spend this mana only to cast Planeswalker spells. Alright, I like that. And, oop, oh, is this the rare? It is not the rare, but it's going to be my Planeswalker. It's going to be a T-Balt. Rakish Instigator. It's a two for a Planes. Static ability, opponent. Your opponents can't gain life. You create a 1-1 one, one red devil creature token with when this creature dies, it deals one damage to any target. For minus two loyalty, comes in with five loyalty. Okay, that that can be a little good. Dead Horde Butcher. Alright, let's see. Zombie Warrior, it's a 1-1 one, one for a swamp and a mountain. Haste. Whenever Dead Horde Butcher deals combat damage to a player or a planeswalker, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Dead Horde Butcher. When Dead Horde Butcher dies, it deals damage equal to its power to any target. Man. That is just a little good. Right. The mountain and an assassin token. Very cool. Very cool. Looks like it's going to be a Golgari with the insect looking armor plating there. Kind of like an exoskeleton. Alright, here we go. Honor the God Pharaoh. 
two and a mountain. As an additional cost to cast this spell, discard a card. Draw two cards and amass one. Hey, that's not too bad. Rising Populous. It's a human creature, 2-2 two, two for two and a planes. Whenever another creature or planeswalker you control dies, put a plus one plus one counter on Rising Populous. Dusk Mantle Operative, 2-2 two, two for one and a swamp. Dusk Mental Operative cannot be blocked by creatures with power 4 or greater. Vivian's Grizzly. It's 2 3, 2 and a, for 2 and a forest. Pay 3 and a forest. Look at the top card of your library. If it's a creature card or planeswalker card, you may reveal it and put it into your hand. If you don't put the card into your hand, put it on the bottom of your library. It's not too bad. Aven Eternal. 2-2 two, two for 2 and a island. Flying. Whenever Avian, Avon Eternal enters the battlefield, a mass 1. Zombie Bird Warrior. Man, look at the detail they went to on the uh, the armor on these guys. This is pretty, pretty awesome. Another Burning Prophets. Obnixus Cruelty. Uh, Jaya's Greeting. Gotten all these before so far. Totally lost. Centaur Nurturer. Prison Realm. Here we go. It's an uncommon. It's an enchantment for two in a plains. When prison in when prison realm enters the battlefield, exile target creature or planeswalker and opponent controls until prison realm leaves the battlefield. When prison realm enters the battlefield, scry one. Awesome. Very awesome. Invade the city for one, a island and a mountain. Sorcery, a mass X, where X is the number of instant or sorcery cards in your graveyard. Whoa, man. You could get a huge zombie creature with that card. Liliana's Triumph for one and a swamp. Each opponent sacrifices a creature. If you control a Liliana Planeswalker, each opponent also discards a card. It's not too bad. Oh, here we go. Nice. Vivian, Champion of the Wilds. It's a Planeswalker for two and a forest. Static ability. You may cast creature spells as though they had flash. So you can be dropping dragons or worms or whatever big nasties you have. Like they're instants. That's what the flash ability does. It's plus one ability is your next turn up to one. Target creature gains vigilance and reach. Vigilance. It doesn't have to tap while attacking. And reach, of course, is if can block as though it had flying even if it doesn't. It's a minus two ability. Look at the top three cards of your library. Exile one face down and put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. For as long as it remains exiled, you may look at that card and you may cast it if it's a creature card. It comes into play with four loyalty counters initially. Very awesome. Swamp and a zombie. Crop Invader. It's a 2 2 for 2 and a mountain, a zombie Minotaur Warrior. As long as it's your turn, On Crop Invader has first strike. Pay 1 colorless, sacrifice another creature. It gets plus 2 plus 0 until end of turn. And combine that with its first strike ability, that's not a bad card. Another Bulk War Giants. Dust Mantle Operative. Snare Spinner, Centaur Nurturer, Demolish, Rezotev Reaver, Defiant Strike, Erratic Visionary, a Guild Globe. Okay, we haven't seen him yet. Two cast cost artifacts. When it enters the battlefield, draw a card. Two and tap. Sacrifice Guild Globe. Add two mana of different colors to your mana pool. Not too bad at all. Alright. And Grath's Rampage. A swamp and a mountain. Choose one. Target player sacrifices an artifact. Target player sacrifices a creature. Or target player can sacrifice a planeswalker. 
Ooh, that's a tough choice. I don't care who you are. It's pretty powerful. God Pharaoh's Statue. Spells your opponent's legendary artifact. Six casting costs. That's kind of pricey, but let's see what it does. Spells your opponent's cast. Costs two more to cast. At the beginning of your end step, each opponent loses one life. Okay, you know what? That actually might be worth that six casting cost. That's a pretty powerful artifact there. Ooh, there we go. Ashiok Dream Render. One, a neither a plane or either a swamp or an island for the next two. Static ability is going to be spells and abilities your opponent's control can't cause their controller to search their library. Whoa, that is pretty awesome. I can tell you that this that makes pretty much uh, two of my current decks useless. Target player puts the top four cards of their library into their graveyard, then exile each opponent's graveyard. For minus one, comes into play with five loyalty counters. Whew, that's that's a little powerful, even for a a uh, uncommon planeswalker. Oh, Mobilize district, rare land on tapped to add a colorless. Pay four, Mobilize district becomes a three three citizen creature with vigilance until end of turn. It's still a land. This ability costs one less to activate for each legendary creature and planeswalker you control. So if you're playing planeswalker heavy, you've got a 3-3 Vigilance almost all the whole game. At some point, I'm just going to go straight to the rares once we start seeing multiples of everything on here. But here's a new one so far we haven't seen. A Samut Sprint for a mountain instant. Target creature gets plus two plus one and gains haste until end of turn. Scry one. That That's pretty good. I like that. War Screecher. It's a bird. One three for three. For one and a plains. Flying. Five and a planes tap other creatures you control get plus one plus one until end of turn. That's a little pricey. Not gonna probably be playing with him. To fairy's time twist one and a island. Exile target permanent you control. Return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of your of the next end step. If it enters the battlefield as a creature, it enters with an additional plus one plus one counter on it. Ooh, man, that's a little good. Vampire Opportunist. 2-1 for 1 and a island. Or, sorry, my correction. A swamp. Ooh, 6 and a swamp. Each opponent loses 2 life and you gain 2 life. That's a little pricey. That, that's more of a multiplayer or EDH kind of ability. That's, I don't know if I want to play, play, with, play with that one. Another Vivian's Grizzly. Uh, Callous Dismissal. For one in an island, return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand, a mass one. Not too bad for a sorcery. Another Arboreal Grazer. Another Divine Arrow. Thundering Ceratok. I don't think I've seen one of these before. It's a four or five for four in a forest. It's a Rhino. With two horns. Looks pretty cool, actually. That's Trample. Trample. Uh, basically means if he were to be blocked by another creature, if that pe creature's toughness is less than his power, then the difference gets dealt directly to your life points. Or your life total. I apologize. When Thundering Ceratok enters the battlefield under creatures, other creatures you control gain Trample until end of turn. Well, that's be just a good bit of overrun right there. Another D Spark, very nice. Nissa's Triumph. For two forests. Search your library for up to two basic forest cards. Oh, I apologize. If you control a Nissa Planeswalker instead, search your library for up to three land cards. Reveal those cards, put them into your hand, then shuffle your library. Okay, it's not bad, not bad. Alright, Dovin, Hand of Control. So I'm a Planeswalker for the deck. Two and either an island or a plains. 
artifact instant and sorcery spells your opponent's cast costs one more to cast for the static ability not bad it's so minus one loyalty counter until ne your next turn prevent all damage that will be, be dealt to and dealt by target permanent and opponent controls not bad comes into play with five loyalty counters and ooh the awakening of Vitu Ghazi now Vitu Ghazi is the the city tree for the Selesnia guild and that thing just looks awesome holy crap so instant for three and two forests put nine plus one plus one counters on target land you control it becomes a legendary enchant a legendary elemental creature with haste named Vitugazi. it's still a land whoo man that is nine damage coming straight at you that is just dumb and I love it Oh, here we go. We got a, my first foil out of the box. Another on crop invader. That that looks pretty awesome. A planes and a zombie. Okay, Gideon's Sacrifice for a Plains. Choose a creature or Planeswalker you control. All damage that will be dealt this turn to you and permanence you control is dealt to the chosen permanent instead. If it's still on the battlefield. It's not too bad. A Naga Eternal. It's a 3 2 for 2 and a Island. Doesn't have anything special abilities, but that is some really pretty awesome artwork. Another Raging Crunch. Uh, battlefield Promotion. Instant for one and a planes. Put a plus one plus one counter on target creature. That creature gains first strike. Until end of turn, you gain two life. Not too bad. Not too bad. Another Snare Spinner. Another Tithe Bearer Giants. Another Herald of the Death Horde, Dead Horde, of the Dread Horde, I apologize. Thundering Saratok. Wall of Runes. Spark Harvest. I don't think I've seen this one yet. For a Swamp. Sorcery. As an additional cost to cast this spell, sacrifice a creature or play three and another Swamp. Destroy a creature or planeswalker. That is not bad. If you're running black, I hope you're going to have quite a bit of tokens to sacrifice to this thing. But man. Lazotep Plate. You're seeing on these. So for one and an island, a mass one, you and permanence you control gain hexproof until end of turn. Not bad. Heartwarming redemption for two, uh, five, uh, mountain and a plains instant. Discard all the cards in your hand, then draw that many cards plus one. You gain life equal to the number of cards in your hand. Man, that's not pretty. That's pretty good. Oh, here we go, my Planeswalker. Kazmina, Ignomatic Mentor. I don't really know where she came from. Uh, static ability, spells your opponent's cast. That targeted creature or Planeswalker you control costs two more to cast. Not bad. It's minus two ability. Create a two, two blue wizard creature token. Draw a card, then discard a card. It's five loyalty to begin with. It's not too bad. Oath of Kaya, one of the oaths. For one, a Plains and a Swamp, a legendary enchantment. When Oath of Kaya enters the battlefield, it deals three damage to any target and you gain three life. Whenever an opponent attacks a Planeswalker, you control with one or more creatures. Oath of Kaya deals two damage to that player and you gain two life. That's not bad at all. We got us a Forest and a Spirit Token. Alright, so we've got a war creature again. 
Ashiok Skulker. Oh, we haven't seen a Yubi yet. So four and a island. Three and an island. It cannot be blocked this turn. It's a three five nightmare. Another forced landing. A Shriek Diver, Demolish, Centaur Nurturer, Lazo Tep Reaver, Defiant Strike, Erratic Visionary, another Guild Globe, very cool. Uh, here we go. Teobalt's Rager for the uncommons for this pack. One and a Mountain, a 1 2 Devil Creature. When Teobalt's Rager dies, it deals 1 damage to any target. Plus for one and a mountain, it gets plus two, plus zero until end of turn. Very nice. Bolt bend. Three and a mountain. This spell costs three less to cast if you control a creature with power four or greater. Change the target of target spell or ability with a single target. That is not bad. Bond of insight. For three and an island. Sorcery. Each player puts the top four cards of their library into their graveyard. Return up to two instant and or sorcery cards from your graveyard to your hand. Exile Bond of Insight. Not bad. Oh, there it is. Nissa who shakes the world. Three and two forests. Legendary Planeswalker with a static ability. Whenever you tap a force for mana, add an additional mana, additional force. Very nice. Plus one ability. Put three plus one plus one counters and up to one target non-creature land you control. Untap it. It becomes a zero zero elemental creature with vigilance and haste until end of turn. Haste is when it can attack the minute it's put into play. The minus eight ability. You get an emblem. Ooh, very nice. Lands you control have indestructible. So it's your library... For any number of force cards, put them onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle your library. Oh man. Five loyalty to come out. That is, oh, that is just stupid levels of good. There is no current way to get rid of emblems in Magic the Gathering. I don't know if that has changed with this set, but there is no way to get rid of that emblem once it's on the battlefield. An island and another zombie ar army token. All right, guys, girls, I am going to be going straight to the uncommons and rares of the remainder of the packs in this box. So bear with me. All right, here we go. Rowl's Outburst. For two, an island and a mountain. Instant. Rawls Outburst deals three damage to any target. Look at the top two cards of your library. Put one of them into your hand, the other into your graveyard. It's not too bad. Elite Guard Mage. Two uh, planes and an island. Human Wizard. Two, three. Flying. Whenever it enters the battlefield, you gain three life and draw a card. It's not too bad. Uh, there's my Planeswalker, Samut Tyrant Smasher. Come to a, either a Mountain or a Forest for the other two. Creatures you control have haste for the static ability, not bad. Minus one, target creature gets plus two plus one and gains haste until end of turn. Scry one. Not bad, with five loyalty to start off with. Ooh, Narset's Reversal. Two Islands. Copy, target instant, or sorcery spell, then return it to its owner's hand. You may choose new targets for the copy. Not bad at all. Swamp and another zombie army token. Okay, I think this box really, really wants me to build a zombie deck. Because of all the, ar the army tokens I am getting. Domri's Ambush, a mountain in a mountain of forest. 
So sorcery, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control. Then that creature deals damage equal to its power target or cre to target creature or planeswalker you don't control. Very nice. Very nice. Flux Channeler, Human Wizard, 2-2, two, 2 two an island. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, proliferate. Proliferate. Not bad at all. Oh, there's my planeswalker. Jang Yangu, Wild Crafter. Each creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it has tap at one mana of any color. Not bad. Minus one ability, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature. And three loyalty to begin with. Very nice. There it is. Ooh, nice. Time wipe. What does this do? Two, a plains and an island. Sorcery. Return a creature you control to owner's library, then destroy all creatures. Whoa, man. That's like a uber powered Wrath of God right there. Old school stuff. Alright, and we're back. I apologize. Alright, here we go. Jace's Triumph. Two in an island, a sorcery. Draw two cards. If you control a Jace Planeswalker, draw three cards instead. Not too bad. Cyclops Electromancer. For four in a mountain, a four two, when it enters the battlefield, it deals X damage to dark creature and opponent controls where X is the number of instant and sorcery cards in your graveyard. It's not too shabby. Dead Dread Horde Twins. So it's a 2-2 two, two for 3 in a mountain. Zombie Jackal Warrior. When De Dread Horde Twins enters the battlefield, amass 2. Right. Zombie tokens you control have trample. That's a little good. And Oh man! Yes! Gideon Black Blade. Very, very nice. A mythic planeswalker. For one and two planes, static ability. As long as it's your turn, Gideon Black Blade is a 4 4 human soldier creature with indestructible that's still a planeswalker. Second static ability prevent all damage that will be dealt to Gideon Black, Black Blade during your turn. Plus one. Up to one other target creature you control gains your choice of Vigilance, Lifelink, or Indestructible until end of turn. Excuse me. Minus six, Exile, target non-land permanent with four loyalty to start off with. That is not bad at all. And the artwork is just pretty sweet. And you can see he's holding the Black Blade right there. We'll get into uh, the lore behind that in a later video. A mountain and a goblin token. All right. And Dread Malkin. Looks like a really pissed off zombie cat. It's a 1 1 for a swamp. Menace. This creature cannot be blocked except by two or more creatures. Very nice. Two and a swamp. Sacrifice another creature or planeswalker. Put two plus one plus one counters on Dread Malkin. Not too bad. Dovin's Veto. One planes, one island. Instant, this spell can't be countered. Counter target non-creature spell. Not too bad. Ooh, there we are. Walt, Walt, Okay, I cannot pronounce her name. I have tried. I'm not going to butcher it anymore for y'all's sake. The Sun's Heart. Two and a either a mount, uh, plains or a forest. 
Static ability. Each creature you control assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power. It's a minus three ability. You gain life equal to the greatest toughness among creatures you control. Starts off with seven loyalty counters. It's a bit higher than the other ones we've seen. Uh, that static ability harkens back to uh, the dinosaurs from the Ixalan block, having usually having a sh bigger toughness than power. For some, not all. So that's what that's from. Oh, what? What? God Eternal Ronus. Yes, I was super, super excited about this one when I saw the spoiler. Oh, that I'm just, I am ecstatic right now, guys. Three for two forests. Death Touch. When God Eternal Ronus enters the battlefield, double, double the power of each other creature you control until end of turn. Those creatures gain vigilance until end of turn. When it dies or is put into exile from the battlefield, you may put it into your owner's library, into its owner's library, third from the top. It's a 5-5. Five, five. Whew, that is just awesome looking. I love that artwork, too. Now we got Chandra's Triumph. Yeah, one in the mountain. Instance when Chandra's Triumph deal Chandra's Triumph deals three damage to target creature or planeswalker and opponent controls. It deals five damage to that permanent instead if you control a Chandra's Planeswalker. Very nice. Very nice. Another Tyrant Scorn. Very nice. Ooh, uh, Nixil Nixilius. The Hate Twisted. Three. Two swamps. When a static ability will be whenever an opponent draws a card, it deals one damage to that player. Minus two, destroy target creature. Its controller draws two cards. Five loyalty are off with. And spark double. Okay. Three and an island. You have you may have spark double. Enter the battlefield as a copy of a creature or planeswalker you control, except it enters with an additional plus one plus one counter on it. If it's a creature, it enters an, with an additional loyalty counter on it if it's a planeswalker. If it isn't legendary, if it isn't legendary, and it isn't legendary if that permanent is legendary. So you can get two of almost any super powerful creature on the field and not go away with all the abilities. Oh, very nice. Then a planes and a zombie on me. Not even I'm about halfway through this box, give or take, and I am just super stoked right now. Bond of Revival. Forward a swamp. Return to our creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. It gains haste until your next turn. Very nice. Then, oh man, there it is. Jace, Welder of Mysteries. One and three islands. If you would draw a card while your library has no cards in it, you win the game instead. Plus one ability. Target player puts the top two cards of their library into their graveyard. Draw a card. It's minus eight. Draw seven cards. If Then if your library has no cards in it, you win the game. Four loyalty to come with. So basically you can mill yourself and win the game. Okay, that is just awesome. I'm going to devise some insane strategy for that at a later date. And I will do a deck tech on it when the time comes. Second, Foily, Aid the Fallen. Alright, 
Alright, Vizier of the Scorpion. Say one one zombie wizard for two and an island or two in a swamp. I cannot talk today, ladies and gents, I do not know why. When Vizier of the Scorpion enters the battlefield, a mass one. Zombie tokens you control have death touch. Whoa, that's pretty good. Another interplanar beacon, very nice. Ooh, Narset. Part of Reveals, one and two islands. Static ability, each opponent can't draw more than one card each turn. <clears throat> Minus two, look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal a non-creature, non-land card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Not bad. Five loyalty to start off with. Ooh, Tolsmere. Tolsimir. Friend to Wolves. Very nice. He had a uh, card back in the very first Ravnica block. For two, a forest and a plains. A legendary elf scout for a, which is a three three. When Tulsimir, friend to wolves, enters the battlefield, create Volja, friend to elves, a legendary three three green and white wolf creature token. Whenever a wolf enters the battlefield under your control, you gain three life, and that creature fights up to one target creature you don't control. Huh, that can get a little good. Yeah. Mountain and another servo artifact. Alrighty, here we go. Bond of Discipline. Looks like I've got all the bonds. Pretty cool. Four in a plains. Sorcery. Tap all creatures your opponents control. Creatures you control gain lifelink until end of turn. Ooh, that'd be good. Tenth District Legionnaire. For a mountain in a plains. Two two haste. Whenever you cast a spell that targets 10th District Legionnaire, put a plus one, plus one counter on 10th District Legionnaire, then scry one. That's a little good. Nope, oh, there's my Planeswalker, Kaya, Bane of the Dead. Three, and then three of either a Plains or a Swamp in either con combination. Your opponents and permanents your opponents control with Hexproof can be the targets of spells and abilities you control as though they didn't have hexproof. Whoa, that is a game changer right there. Minus three loyalty, exile target creature. Starts with seven loyalty altogether. That's going to be a little devastating with uh, how powerful Orzov Guild is right now. Then, oh, Massacre Girl for the rare. 4-4 four, four for three and two. Black Menace. It means it can't be blocked by two, unless by two or more creatures. When Massacre Girl enters the battlefield, each other creature gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. Whenever a creature dies this turn, each creature other than Massacre Girl gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. That's not too bad. A swamp and a actual zombie, not a zombie army. Here we go. Alrighty, Hugh Alt Altley's Raptor. It's going to be a 2-3 for a forest and a plains. Vigilance. When it enters the battlefield, proliferate. Not too bad. Rescuer Sphinx. 2 and 2 islands. 3-2 flyer. As it enters the battlefield, you may return a non-land permanent you control to its owner's hand. If you do, it enters the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it. So you get a three, a four three, if you just return something to your hands. Not too bad. And 
Angrath, Captain of Chaos. Two, and either two red or two black. Creatures you control have menace. Not too bad. And a mass two. For minus two, five low to start off with. That and another mobilized district. Not one of the rares I was hoping to get a second of, but hey, we'll see what happens. All right, well, ooh, another full card we haven't gotten yet. Firemind Vessel for four. Enters the battlefield tapped. Tap it to add two mana of different colors. Any combination, that's pretty awesome. And I like the effect it has right there, you see. Pretty awesome. A forest and a zombie army. Alright, Rubble Belt Riders for one and a mountain and a plant, uh, forest. Haste, whenever Rubble Belt Riders attacks, it gets plus X plus zero until end of turn where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. Whoa. That can be pretty good considering it is the Gruul Clan and they have a lot of powerful creatures. Rally of Wings. Second. All right. One and a planes. Untap all creatures you control. Creatures you control with flying get plus two plus two until end of turn. That's not bad at all. And there we are. Nahiri Storm of Stone two and either mountain or planes. As long as you, it's your turn, creatures you control have first strike and equip abilities you activate cost one less to activate. Not bad. Minus X. Interesting. Nahiri Storm of Stone deals X damage to target tapped creature. Well, so you can pretty much one shot just about anything the minute this thing hits the field. Not bad. And Ravnica at War for three and a plain sorcery. Exile all multicolored permanents. <laughs> Whoa. Considering this is a multicolor block, that is really powerful. Planes and oh, here's what the wolf token looks like. Alright, we have another Rowl's Outburst. Very cool. Another... Another Bolt Bend. Hang on, I got some cards mixed up over here. Alright, another Tia Bolt Wreckish Instigator. Very nice. Bioessence Hydra. What is this monstrosity? 443... Forest and Island, Trample, Bioessence Hydra enters the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it for each loyalty counter on Planeswalkers you control. Whoa. That is stupid levels awesome. 
Whenever one or more loyalty counters are put on a Planeswalker you control, put that many plus one plus one counters on Bio Essence Hydra. Oh yeah, that's... Whew, man. We have a Foil Forest. That looks pretty awesome. Regular Forest. And another Wolf Token. And that is my dog barking at somebody outside. I'm not sure who. Alright, Arlen, voice of the pack. Four and two, uh, force. Each creature you control that's a wolf or a werewolf enters the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on it. Not bad. Minus two, create a two two wolf creature token. Seven loyalty to begin with. That's not bad at all. And then, silent submersible. Interesting. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player or a planeswalker, draw a card. Two island. Say two three crew two. Paradise Druid, one and a forest, a two one, has hex proof as long as it's untapped, which means it cannot be targeted spells or abilities your opponent's control. Tapped at one man of any color. Not too bad. Another heartwarming redemption. Oh, Cura, Behemoth Beckoner. Alright, two and a island or a forest. Whenever a creature with power four greater enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. Minus one to untap target permanents. That's, that's a little underwhelming for its name, but still not terrible. Then Karn's Bastion. Uh, tap to add uh, Colas, or four to tap and proliferate. Ooh, not bad at all. Swamp and a Wizard. There we have Sorry about that. Oh, okay. We have a Mayhem Devils, a three three for one. A mountain and a swamp. It's a, whenever your player sacrifices a permanent, Mayhem Devil does one damage to any targets. Not bad, pretty awesome artwork there. Gleaming Overseer. So one four for one, a mount an island in a swamp. When it enters the battlefield, amass one. Zombie tokens you control have X proof and menace. Damn, it's not bad at all. And ooh. Sorry about that. And another Wanderer Planeswalker. And Casualties of War. Two, two, Swamp, two, Forest. Choose one or more. Basically a kill everything. Destroy an artifact, a creature, an enchantment, a land, or a Planeswalker. You can choose one of those or all of them. That's just a little good. <laughs> 
an island, and another assassin token. Ugin's Conjurance. It's a spare monk. Zero zero for X casting cost. So X means you can pay whatever you want to get it out onto the battlefield. Enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it. If damage will be dealt to Ugin's, Con Ugin's Conjurance while well, it has a plus one plus one counter on it, prevent that damage and remove that many plus one plus one counters from Ugin's Conjurance. And oh shit. Ugin himself. Ugin the Ineffable for 6, 4 loyalty to begin with. Colorless spells you cast cost 2 less to cast. Man, artifacts can be so cheap. Exile the top card of your library face down and look at it. Create a 2 2 colorless spirit creature token. When that token leaves the battlefield, put the exiled card into your hand. Interesting, for a plus 1. Minus 3, destroy target permanent. That's 1 or more colors. One or more. Guys. You can kill basically anything. I do mean anything. Whew. It's uh, Johnny's Pride Mate. This is a reprint from a fairly recent set. I'm not sure why it became uncommon, but anyway. A 2 2 for 1 any planes. Whenever you gain life, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on a Johnny's Pride Mate. Okay, I guess they did change that ruling after all. Alright. Devouring Helion. Helion. I don't know however you want to pronounce that. It's a 2 2. It's pretty small for a Helion. For two and a mountain, as Devouring Helion enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice any number of creatures and or planeswalkers. If you do, it enters with twice that many plus one plus one encounters on it. Interesting. Then another Kes Kesmina. And Living Twister. For two mountains and a plains. First ability is one and a mountain. Discard a land card. Living Twister deals two damage to any target. Or for a forest, return a tap land you control to its owner's hands. A 2-5 elemental. Interesting, interesting. Alright, for this one we're just going to go straight to the rare. We've already seen all the uncommons in this one, and it is Domri, Anarch of Bolas. One, a mountain, and a forest. Creatures get plus one, plus zero. Plus one at a forest or a mountain. Creatures spells you cast this turn can't be countered. Very nice. Minus two, target creature you control fights target creature you don't control for three loyalty to begin with. It's not too terrible. And all right, we are on the final seven packs. Ooh, man.
And again, we've already seen all these uncommons already, so I'm going to skip to the rare, which is going to be Elder Spell. Two black. Destroy any number of target planeswalkers. Choose a planeswalker you control. Put two loyalty counters on it for each planeswalker destroyed this way. What? Uh, two costs to destroy any number of target planeswalkers? Wow. Holy crap. That is just awesome. Death Sprout. Interesting. For one, two swamps in a forest. Destroy target creature. Search your library for a basic land card. Put it into the battlefield tapped and then shuffle your library. It's an instant. It's not pretty good. Gideon's Triumph. I think we already saw this earlier. Neoform. This is a new one. For a forest in an island. As an additional cost to cast this spell, sacrifice a creature. Search your library for a creature card with converted mana cost equal to 1 plus the sacrificed creature's converted mana cost. Put that card into the battlefield with an additional plus 1 plus 1 counter on it and shuffle your library. That is not too bad to go searching for something big and nasty and make it even a little bit bigger. And then, ooh, Sarkhan the Masterless. Ooh, nice. I uh, am a fan of dragons and all the fiery death they can rain down upon us. So for three and two mountains, static ability, whenever a creature attacks you or a planeswalker you control, each dragon you control deals one damage to that creature. That's not bad. It's plus one ability. Until end of turn, each planeswalker you control becomes a 4-4 red dragon creature and gains flying. Again, not too bad. Minus three, create a four, four red dragon creature token with flying. Starts off with five loyalty to begin with. That is a little good, though I do miss the old five, five red dragon creature tokens that they used to produce back, way back in the onslaught block. Oh man, those just got nasty. seen all of these uncommons and my planeswalker for the deck and my rare is going to be Fibblethib I believe is how it's pronounced The Lost. I actually just watched a video on him last night so this is kind of interesting so one and an island for a 1-1 one -one homunculus, homunculus creature when Fibblethib, the Lost, enters the battlefield, draw a card. If it enters your library or or was cast from your library, draw two cards instead. When Fibblethib becomes target, the target of a spell, shuffle Fibblethib into its owner's library. So that's pretty awesome. It doesn't matter what happens. As soon as it becomes the target of a spell, shuffle it into your library. So even if you're trying to make it bigger, it's still just going to poof, disappear back into your library. Not bad. All right, final four. Couple planeswalkers I was hoping to get. Still haven't seen them yet. Hopefully they're in here. That would be amazing if they were. Alright, we have Eternal Taskmaster. One and a swamp for a 2-3. Zombie. 
enters the battlefield tapped. Whenever it attacks, you may pay two and a swamp. If you do, return to our creature card from your graveyard to your hand. It's not too bad. Another God Pharaoh statue. Uh, ooh, Jaya, Venerated Fire Mage. Four and a mountain. If another red source you control would deal damage to a permanent or player, it deals that much damage plus one to that permanent or player instead. Not bad. Minus two. Jaya, Venerated Fire Mage, deals two damage to any target. Starts with five loyalty counters. Not bad. And Tomic, Distinguished Advocist. I have no idea who this is. For two planes, a 2-3, flying, when lands on the battlefield and land cards in graveyards, can't be the targets of spells or abilities your opponents control. Your opponents can't play land cards from your gra from graveyards. That's actually not that bad. It protects your non-basic lands from some of the nastier stuff out there. Okay. Can't be mad about that. Alright, we've already seen, again, these com these uncommons in this pack, so let's go right to the rare. And it's a Tamiyo, Collector of Tales. Tamiyo. Very nice. Two, a forest and an island. Spells and abilities your opponents control can't cause you to discard cards or sacrifice permanents. Ooh, very nice. It's a plus one ability. You choose a non-land card name. Then reveal the top four cards of your library. Put all cards with the chosen name from among them into your hand, the rest into your graveyard. I have a strange feeling we should put this in a partitioner's deck, but I shall see. Minus three. Return tart card from your graveyard to your hand. Nice. Starts with five loyalty. Let's... Oh, we got a foil. What? Oh, yeah. A foil raw storm conduit. That is just awesome. Looking, look at the detail from that thing. This is my remember, this is my first rare. And I got a foil version of them too. That's pretty awesome. I cannot complain about that. And down to the final two packs. Alright, again, seeing all these uncommons already. I'm having to do this one for the sake of time, guys. I have somewhere to be in the next hour. So we're going to go straight to the rare, and it's going to be another Karn's Bastion. Okay, that's, that's awesome. I cannot complain about that at all. And the last one, I told my son he could open it, so we're going to take a minute for him to open it, see what it is, and then we will show you the goodness of the last pack. Okay hey guys, this is the last pack reveal from this box of War of the Spark. You see, it is empty. I have no more. I have nothing more in here. There's all the cards there and right there. So now, my son said he wanted to introduce the last card. So go ahead, kiddo. What is our last card? Now for the last card, we have God Eternal Oketcha. It is for three and two planes, and it's a legendary creature, Zombie God. Okay, that is awesome. I got two. I got three gods out of this set. I I am just super happy about this. So double strike, so it deals twice the damage it would. So instead of dealing six damage if it were to attack, it deals, or, I'm sorry, instead of dealing three damage when it attacks, it would deal six damage. That's just awesome. So whenever you cast a creature spell, create a 4-4 black zombie warrior creature token with vigilance. 
When God Eternal Oketra dies or is put into exile from the battlefield, you may put it into its owner's library from third from the top. Wow. Okay, that is awesome. Very cool. We are officially done with this box of War of the Spark. I am super, super happy with all my pulls. I did not get Nicol Bolas or the new Liliana. But I hope to remedy that soon, because I'll probably be buying another box here within the next week or two. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Flip around here. Thanks for watching this episode of the Path to Exile podcast. This is Trooper, and we will be. And if you like the video, make sure you press that like button, subscribe, and we should be having our Patreon set up within the week. Y'all have a good one.